More than 50% of the electric vehicles sold in America today just lost their federal tax credit. That's because the IRS posted its 2024 list of electric vehicles that qualify for the tax credit. In today's video, I'm going to go over why that is, why the list is likely to change in the coming months, and then I'm going to go over every fully electric vehicle as well as every plug-in hybrid that is currently on the IRS's list for the federal tax credit incentive. So I said that more than 50% of the EVs that were qualified for the federal tax credit, at least some portion of it in 2023, are not on the IRS's list. By my count, 43 EVs and plug-in hybrids qualified in 2023. That's down to 19 on this list. However, that might change. And that's because the IRS gave manufacturers up until December 18th to submit documentation to prove their vehicles qualified for the federal tax credit. Evidently, not all oil makers met that deadline, at least not for all their vehicles, which is kind of crazy because they knew this was coming since the new tax credit was signed into law with the Inflation Reduction Act in like, I think it was like July of 2022. So it's a year and a half ago. They knew this and they still didn't make the deadline in any event. Um, so more vehicles may be added to this list. So what I'm going to do here at State of Charge is update this video as vehicles get added, if they get added. So if you're watching this video now in the beginning of 2024, this is most likely the latest version. But if you're watching it later in 2024, what I would do is go to my main channel, State of Charge, and click the search feature and type in federal tax credit because there might be a newer version of this video that includes more vehicles than what we're gonna talk about here today. So check that out if you're interested in getting the latest version of this video because I suspect I'm gonna have to update it. Okay, so the Inflation Reduction Act signed in, in 2022 reshaped the federal tax credit. And what it did was it incentivized domestic production of EVs and the battery components. So first of all, the vehicle's final assembly has to be in North America for it to even just qualify for the, for the list. Now that upset a lot of uh, automakers like the German brands, uh, the Korean brands, uh, Japanese brands, um, but that's the way it is. We're incentivizing domestic manufacturing. But then that's just the first step to get past. Then there's two steps that split the tax credit in half. Each step gives the uh, tax credit another $3,750, or allows you to qualify for $3,750, and the two together meet the uh, total of $7,500. The first component is the critical minerals component, and that's the percentage of domestically produced or extracted uh, minerals that go into the EV batteries. The second part is the battery components, and that's where the battery components are made. So in 2023, the critical mineral requirement was 40% of the minerals had to be domestically produced. And that went up to 50%, an extra 10%. The, the battery component section now went up from 50% in 2023 to 60% in 2024. So that's why some of the vehicles aren't going to qualify anymore. And this gets harder every year. So every year we're going to have to do this. Vehicles are going to drop off, then they're going to get added. Um, you know, I think it's a good thing that we're incentivizing domestic manufacturing for all vehicles, not just electric vehicles, but... The only thing I will say about this, and I've spoken with a lot of industry professionals, that the aggressive timeline might be a little too strict for a lot of manufacturers to keep up with. We'll see how that pans out. Maybe not. Maybe they'll, they'll meet it. But uh, I suspect for a while, there's going to be a lot less vehicles that qualify for the tax credit that used to uh, previously. Okay, so let's go over the list of vehicles that currently qualify for the federal tax credit. I'm going to break it up into two, the all electric battery electric vehicles or BEVs. BEV is an acronym for battery electric vehicle. And then we'll go after the uh, plug-in hybrids or PHEVs. Uh, we'll do those secondly. And then when we're done going over all the vehicles that currently qualify, I'm going to explain a little bit more about how the tax credit was changed from uh, you uh, submitting your documents when you do your taxes. Now it's a point of sale tax credit where you get it right at the dealership. Um, but that could be problematic for a lot of people. We'll talk about that. And I'll also talk a little bit more about 
the qualifications uh, to qualify for the federal tax credit, you as an individual. Um, but I want to point out right up front that this doesn't affect the uh, tax credit for the used EVs. That remains the same, and I'll go over the qualifications for that also at the end. But now let's take a look at the vehicles that are on the IRS's list. I'm going to do this alphabetically. We're going to start off with Chevrolet. Okay, so you'll notice here for Chevrolet, it's just the Bolt EV and the Bolt EUV and model years 2022 through 2023. Now, Chevrolet ended production of the Bolt EV and EUV this year. Much to my disappointment, I have a 2023 Bolt EV and I absolutely love it. So the Bolt and Bolt EUV both qualify for the full $7,500. Now there's an MSRP limit of $55,000. That depends on the classification of the vehicle. The Bolt EV and EUV have a limit of 55,000. I think you'd be very hard pressed to option an EV or an EUV to 55,000. Matter of fact, I think it's impossible uh, because it's a very, uh, uh, let's say aggressively priced EV. I got mine after the federal tax credit and the tax credit that New Jersey has here. We have a point of sale rebate of $4,000 that the Bolt EV qualified for. I was all in for about $17,000, fantastic deal. And I urge my followers and people watching this video, if there's any Bolt EVs or EUVs left on your local dealer's lots, go buy them because they it's a great vehicle at a fantastic price, especially considering now you're gonna get that $7,500 as cash on the hood. You're gonna walk out of the dealership not paying it. You don't have to file for it later. So um, it's a shame the Bolt EV and EV is going away, at least temporarily. Chevy says they're gonna bring it back in 2025. We'll see about that. But it's really a shame it's going away because they're good vehicles at fantastic prices. There's no other Chevrolets on here. You don't see the Equinox EV, the Silverado. You don't see the Blazer EV. Those are all the Ultium-based EVs that we hope uh, are going to qualify for this list and that GM just, hasn't gotten their act together and supplied the IRS with all the documentation, it'll be a shame if those uh, don't qualify for this, but it's gonna depend on the uh, mineral components and as well as the battery components. So hopefully we'll be adding those to the list later on. This video, as well as all of the videos here on State of Charge is sponsored by QMerit. Once I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charger you're gonna buy, then Follow the link in the description of my videos and have QMerit install it. Next up, let's take a look at the all-electric offerings by Ford that's currently on the IRS's tax incentive list. All right, it's really just one vehicle, the Ford F-150 Lightning. Now there's two versions of it, the extended range battery and the standard range battery, but it's really just one vehicle. No Ford Mustang Mach-E here on the list. Wow, and that is disappointing. Hopefully, like GM, Ford's going to submit the proper documentation and show that it qualifies. Maybe it doesn't qualify, it's a shame if it doesn't, but as of now, the only vehicles that qualify are the Ford F-150 Lightning, both extended range and standard range battery, and they qualify for the full $7,500. Now, because these are trucks, the MSRP limit is higher. You have to keep the price under $80,000. Now, it's going to be very hard to do that with an extended range battery because while the starting price is just under that, it's difficult to, not to get any options. You can make it work. You can get an extended range F-150 Lightning for under $80,000 and get the tax credit, but it's a little difficult. With the standard range battery, uh, it's a lot easier. There's a lot more headroom in there. You could really load it up a standard range battery Lightning if you wanted to and still qualify for the federal tax credit. Now let's take a look at the vehicles offered by Rivian that are on this year's IRS tax credit list. Okay, it's pretty much Rivian's entire lineup here. You start off with the R1S, uh, the dual motor large battery pack, the R1S quad motor large battery pack. Then we have the R1T dual motor large battery pack, the R1T dual motor max pack, and the R1T quad motor large pack. And the one thing I will mention here is that it's going to be very difficult to get a new order of a Rivian vehicle below the $80,000 cap. Now, there are some models that will squeeze under the cap, but many of these models here will have a starting MSRP of over $80,000. So while they're on the approved list, I don't think that you'll be able to get all of these trims and still qualify for the tax credit. 
And finally, let's take a look at the Tesla vehicles that's on the list. I was a little surprised by this because I expected more of Tesla's vehicles to qualify. You'll see Model 3 Performance. The interesting thing is only the Performance version of the Model 3 is currently on the list, not the long range or the standard range, just Model 3 Performance. So uh, that's very interesting, but it does qualify for the full $7,500 federal tax credit. Now you do have that MSRP limit of 55,000, so you're not gonna be able to load up the Model 3 Performance with a lot of options and still get this tax credit, but you can get one for this and it actually, I think it brings the price down lower than the Model 3 with the dual motor long range. So uh, that's probably the buy right there, right now. Get the performance and you're actually gonna get it for less than what the long range Model 3 is. Okay, next up, the Model X long range. Again, $7,500, but you have to keep that under the $80,000 limit. You can do that, but it's difficult. You can't get a lot of options. Model Y. All-wheel drive, full $7,500, 80,000 limit. You can load that up. You don't have to worry about hitting that $80,000 limit. Model Y Performance, again, full $7,500, $80,000 cap. The Model Y rear-wheel drive, full $7,500 and $80,000 limit. Now you'll notice it's just 2024 listed for the Model Y rear-wheel drive. Okay, well that's it for the fully electric vehicles that qualify for the federal tax credit. So far, at least in 2024, hopefully that gets updated. Uh, only Chevrolet, Ford, Rivian, and Tesla have any fully electric vehicles that qualify for the tax credit. Now we're gonna take a look at the plug-in hybrids because there are a few on the list that do qualify. First up, we'll look at the Chrysler Pacifica PHEV, and that's from 2022 through 2024, the full $7,500 federal tax credit with an $80,000 limit. Next, we'll take a look at Ford, the Escape Plug-In Hybrid, 2022 through 2024. That only qualifies for half of the federal tax credit. I'm not sure which half it didn't meet, but it didn't meet one of them. Probably the critical mineral component, but uh, I don't know for sure. Um, and uh, you can get 3750 off the Escape Plug-In Hybrid. Okay, Jeep vehicles, the Jeep Grand Cherokee PHEV 4XE, the 2022 through 2024, uh, 3750 again, half the federal tax credit with a limit of $80,000. And then we have the Wrangler PHEV 4XE, 2022 through 2024, again, 3750. You don't get the full federal tax credit, but you do get 3750 off. Okay, and finally, the Lincoln Corsair Grand Touring, 2022 through 2024, 3750 with the limit of $80,000. The tax credit is not refundable. You're not gonna get money back. It's just a credit on the taxes that you should have paid. It's also not transferable for future years. It's only valid for the year the vehicle is purchased. And the sale only qualifies if you buy the vehicle new. Also, the dealers are required to report your name and taxpayer identification number to the IRS for you to be eligible to claim the benefit. In addition, the vehicle's manufactured suggested retail price can't exceed $80,000 for vans, sport utility vehicles and pickup trucks, $55,000 for all other vehicles. Okay, well, I've been talking a lot about how the vehicles qualify for the tax credit. The individual also has to qualify. So let's talk a little bit about that now. The tax credit is available for individuals as well as businesses. And to qualify, you must buy or lease the vehicle for your own use and not purchase it just so you could resell it. You have to use it primarily in the US. In addition, your modified adjusted gross income may not exceed $300,000 for married couples filing jointly, $225,000 for heads of household, and $150,000 for all other filers. Now, as I mentioned, in previous years, you paid the full price for the vehicle, and then you claimed it on your taxes, and if you qualified, you got the money taken off your taxes. It's different now. It's a, they call it cash on the hood because it happens at the time of purchase at the dealership. The dealer's automatically gonna deduct the tax credit from the purchase price. What happens is then they file papers with the IRS, and within 72 hours, the IRS pays the dealer for the tax credit, whatever was claimed, 7,500 or 3,750, the dealer is made whole. Now, the problem 
can happen where you originally thought you were going to qualify for the tax credit, but then at the end of the year, you don't. So what happens in that case? You have to pay the IRS back. So the only way that's going to happen is if you don't think that you're going to make the uh, limit, like uh, I mentioned earlier, the $300,000 limit for uh, married filing jointly. Let's say you're projecting your income this year to be at $270,000, and then you or your significant other makes a lot more money than you expected. Now you exceed the $300,000 limit, you'll owe the tax credit that you got on your car to the IRS. Now, luckily, it doesn't happen the other way. Let's say you don't earn enough money to fully take advantage of the tax credit. This is how it was in previous years. If you didn't earn, pay enough tax or owe enough tax on the income you earned, you didn't get the full tax credit. Luckily, that's changed this year. And now there's no minimum income. So you don't have to worry about, let's say you lose your job halfway through the year and you've gotten the $7,500 federal tax credit, and now you're not earning enough income to pay enough tax to have a $7,500 tax liability, you would have to pay the IRS back. I mean, talk about a double whammy. You lose your job, and now you got to pay them for a tax credit. That's not the case anymore. They dropped that this year. So now you don't have to worry about the lower end, but you do have to worry about the upper end, which I guess it's not a bad thing if you earn more money than you expected, but you're going to have to fill out a questionnaire uh, at the dealership uh, basically saying that you don't think you're going to earn more. And uh, I think you also have to prove the last year or two that you didn't earn more than what the cap was in order for you to qualify for the uh, tax credit. But if you then this year all of a sudden make more money, get out that checkbook at the end of the year because you're going to have to pay the IRS back. All right, well, that's pretty much all I have here today for the changes to the electric vehicle federal tax credit for 2024. There's a lot of moving parts here, and I wouldn't be surprised if you still have a lot of questions. You can leave them in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. I'm not really a complete subject matter expert on this, but I'll do some research, see if I can't get you the answers that you seek. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be updating this video. So if it doesn't seem like all of the information here was completely current, just search my uh, YouTube channel, State of Charge, for tax credit. There might be a version of this video that was published later, and in that case, it might have some more up-to-date information. I certainly expect more vehicles to be added to this list, but I still can't fathom why the manufacturers weren't able to have all that information prepared and submitted to the IRS by December 18th. I, I, I suppose there's moving parts that I don't know about, but you know, I know if... if I ran an oil manufacturing company that sold EVs. I would do my best to get all the information to the IRS. So starting on day one in 2024, all the vehicles that were going to qualify were on that list. But as I said, there's probably things going on in the background that I really don't know about. Listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, don't forget, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.